When I think about the educational television series I watched in my youth, one that immediately stands out is The Magic School Bus. Originally a series of books, Scholastic, Nelvana, and PBS collaborated to adapt into an animated series. And watching the entire show again recently, it really holds up as a smart piece of edutainment that never talked down to the audience and managed to teach scientific facts in a fun way. The first thing most people remember about the Magic School Bus was the teacher who took her students on many amazing adventures, Miss Frizzle. As voiced by Lily Tomlin, she always had a plan up her sleeve for how to make the lessons more engaging and interactive. What was key to how the episodes weave the educational elements into the main story is they never stopped the story just to teach things. They were able to be subtly integrated into the dialogue, whether through Miss Frizzle giving visual representations or the children figuring things out for themselves. It was key to how the Magic School Bus respected its viewers that it trusted children were intelligent enough to figure things out for themselves. The eight students Miss Frizzle taught were also fleshed out into actual characters and not merely sounding boards. Even though they had their catchphrases, or in the case of Carlos, a heavy dosage of puns, the writers are able to keep them fresh and even played around with them by giving them to other characters. They were also given turns to be the cause of the problem in each episode. Oftentimes, they would be the direct cause for the main conflict and having to learn where they made a mistake and how to get out of the situation through the scientific knowledge they learned. These were child characters who were allowed to be occasionally egotistical and flawed. Even Phoebe's constant want to save animals to an extreme degree was something the series criticized just as much as it praised her for it. It was also a good touch to have actual children voice them. This is somewhat common nowadays, but not so much in the 90s, and one can actually hear their voices breaking through the course of the series, especially Ralphie and Arnold. I don't blame you, Arnold. You don't? No. I blame your crummy idea! Well, I, I just thought... It's too late to think! If we hadn't been recycling, I'd still have my soldier, and I wouldn't have to miss the one show I've been looking forward to seeing all year! The series tackled a wide variety of topics, and actually was not shy about showing certain scientific elements. In one episode, they learn how a chicken's egg is born, and go into almost every detail. In the salmon migration episode, the students go through every cycle of a salmon's birth, and yes, that includes fertilization. In an early episode where they travel down Arnold's body, they talk openly about one way they could exit him. Needless to say, they find a different solution. They also focused on more characters than just Miss Frizzle and the main eight students. Arnold's cousin Janet was a frequent antagonist who would often mock and even sabotage the class when it suited her needs. Certainly the most famous episode of the Magic School Bus was Gets Lost in Space, which I'm more than familiar with in part thanks to the CD-ROM game. I have a feeling a good amount of people in my generation learned a lot about the solar system from this episode. And it also showed the danger of some of Miss Frizzle's field trips by having Arnold actually remove his helmet on Pluto. Only to have him just have a cold in the next scene. Um, no. He's dead, the school is getting sued, Miss Frizzle will lose her job, and that bus is being decommissioned. Oh, right. We want to run for 52 episodes. You know what? Yeah, your, your ending is better. Speaking of which, another clever device was the producer's segment at the end of each episode. To address some of the more outlandish plot elements, these final segments were self-aware in acknowledging the series would speed things along to fit into a 20-minute runtime. They also provided additional educational information without getting in the way of the main story. It was a great example of the brilliant writing often seen in the Magic School Bus. The series would also play with the formula sometimes. The Christmas special was a full-blown musical that reunited Tomlin with her 9-to-5 co-star Dolly Parton, and also developed Wand and Arnold a little bit, suggesting that maybe the writers were trying to ship the two, although it's oddly never addressed in later episodes. It also tackled the important subject of recycling in a manner that makes one think further about what we throw away. Whenever it tackled subjects like the modifying the rainforest natural environment or the necessity of swamps, it did it in a way that felt natural, never preaching to the audience. There was even an episode about how our body fights sickness and disease, which ended by mentioning the importance of vaccination. 
Back then, this probably wasn't that big of a deal, but nowadays, it feels especially necessary to bring that up. While some science has changed since the series originally aired, like Pluto sadly being demoted and no longer considered an official planet, it is impressive how many of the facts remain relevant today. And I think The Magic School Bus is a series that will remain entertaining even to children nowadays. Watching the series again, I was struck by how many things I learned on The Magic School Bus. The whole notion of bees dancing to communicate, I found out about that on The Magic School Bus. Everything I know about precipitation, how water forms clouds and then rain, I learned from The Magic School Bus. The way reptiles change their inner body temperature, you guessed it, The Magic School Bus. I don't think one realizes how many facts they learn from Bill Nye, Miss Frizzle, Beekman, and the Dorland Kindersley series until looking back and realizing they were some of the best teachers we had. I think a large part of it was how entertaining these series were and managed to inject these scientific teachings into our brain. The Magic School Bus, Bill Nye the Science Guy, and Beekman's World were generally funny, which made them an easy gateway to learning these things. Yes, even Carlos's many puns provided their fair share of laughs, not to mention Liz the Lizard's slapstick antics. I think it's also because children tend to watch their favorite television episodes multiple times, when they reran on television or had them on video cassette. So when watching the series again, many years later, one has that moment of remembrance that we learn these facts from them. Netflix seems to recognize that, as not only have they made the entire Magic School Bus series available in their streaming service, thus bringing it to a new generation, but they will be releasing a revival next year with all new episodes teaching new things. They haven't released too many details, like whether it will have the same students, but I'm certainly looking forward to these new adventures. The Magic School Bus is certainly one of the best educational series around, and Miss Frizzle is certainly one of the heroes of educational children's television. See you next time.